Hi, I'm Brian Frazier, Director of Clinical Operations at Bionics. Today we're going to go through a brief video to demonstrate how to tune the biome ankle. After viewing the video, if you have further questions on how to set up or tune the ankle, please see detailed instructions in the Instructions for Use manual. So the biome uses a lithium polymer battery to power the ankle. And we can see here that there is a battery mount on the posterior section of the ankle. So there is an adjustable arm here. You see a series of 2.5 millimeter screws. So these screws can be loosened and at this point the battery can be adjusted uh, to different positions according to the patient's socket. So in order to release the battery, we simply push the gray button, pull out, and we can remove a depleted battery, take a fully charged battery. Uh, there is a male and female pins here that need to be aligned correctly. So really what we want to do is just place the battery vertically into the holster and then press firmly and you'll hear a click and then we hear the calibration beep and we know that the battery has been installed correctly. So in order to connect to the biome and tune it, we first have to power the system up. And the power switch is located on the back lower section of the lithium polymer battery. So it's just a small flip switch that we see here. So to power up, we flip the switch to the right. And we hear a singular calibration beep. So that beep assures us that the ankle has calibrated and powered up su successfully. It turns the Bluetooth on and at that point we, connect, we can connect with the tablet and proceed with the tuning. Now the only other time you may not hear a calibration beep would be is if the patient has too much weight on the toe when you've powered the ankle on. And when that happens we'll hear these successive low tone beeps that tells us that there's too much pressure on the toe. So we would instruct the patient to unload the toe at that point and then we should hear the ankle calibrate normally. With the purchase of a new ankle, each customer receives a tablet as part of the purchase. So it's a Samsung Galaxy tablet, and then they're going to have the Biome app pre-installed onto that tablet. So they go to their home page, they'll see the blue Biome app, and it's as simple as touching on the app, which will open up a login screen. And at that point, it's going to ask for the password. So there is a default password of 1234, so they just touch underneath the password, which will bring up the keyboard and they'll punch in one, two, three, four, hit go. And at that point, it's going to ask you if you want to change the password. So you have that option. We generally recommend that the customers leave it at one, two, three, four so that they don't forget it. So we'll just hit continue in this case. And then that's going to bring up another screen that's going to ask you which country you reside in. So there's a number of options for our international clients. But in this case, we're going to choose United States. And then that's going to bring up the confidentiality statement. So this is primarily intended to assure that we meet HIPAA compliance. And really, that's just assuring that we're not going to be sharing the information that we collect from the ankle with anybody that's not supposed to see it. So we hit Agree. And then it'll go into a Bluetooth search. So this generally takes can take anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds to identify the ankles in the area. So it will have a 10 meter radius for the Bluetooth search. So now we see Ryan's ankle. This is the serial number of the ankle. And at this point, I'm going to choose that in order to log in to the ankle or connect with the ankle. And once we connect, this takes us into the home page for tuning the ankle. So once we've successfully connected to the ankle, it's going to take us into our home tuning page. And the first thing you'll notice there is this large graph in the center of the tablet. So the graph is a network graph, and that's literally what it measures for the patient when they walk. So here we have the amount of network that the ankle is doing across these walking speeds. So we have a range of 0 to 2 meters per second, all the way up to 0.4 newton meters per kilogram of network. And so you'll also notice two dashed blue lines in the graph. 
So the space in between those lines represents your target range when you tune the ankle. So this area represents the optimal amount of net work that the ankle should be doing across these walking speeds. So step one represents or will ask us to input the patient's body weight. And we see the patient weight input towards the bottom of the screen. And so I can touch that, enter the patient's weight, and we'll see that entry there. So after entering the patient's weight in step one, we move to step two. And step two is literally where you will do all the programming for the, the biome angle. So you'll see four parameters here, starting from top, working my way down. First is resistance at heel strike. And so if I choose this, this is going to represent how much resistance the patient gets from heel strike to foot flat. So it's literally controlling the rate of plantar flexion from initial contact to when the foot strikes the floor. So one thing to point out in regards to tuning the biome in general is that after you select the feature that you want to tune, you're gonna be able to control how much change you make with that with the plus and minus button there on the right. So each time I hit the plus button, we can see that that parameter increases by 1%. Your range is from zero to 100. The default setting, which you will see with all new ankles, will start at zero for each one of these parameters. And so we can simply change 1% at a time depending on what the patient needs as we watch them walk. Now if you ever forget what any of these features are or what they change, you can simply choose the feature and then choose this question mark at the bottom. And you can see here this will give you a description of what that parameter is and what it changes. So you can see here I have three choices, self-selected power, fast power and slow power. So I'm, I'm going to begin with self-selected power and you can see this lights up the entire, entire power box. So at this point I'm going to have the patient walk at their self-selected walking speed and I'm going to increase just like I did at resistance at heel strike one percent at a time and we can see that the self-selected power will affect both fast power and slow power at an equal rate and I'm going to increase that until I start to see the patient exhibit steps on the network graph. So just as you would imagine the setting for slow power should always be less than the setting for fast power. So in order to determine what the settings for each one of these parameters should be, we would first select slow power, have the patient walk at a, at a pace that's slower than their self-selected walking cadence. And we should see dots come up on the lower end of the walking speed here. And then we can do the same thing for fast power, is have the patient walk at a pace that's faster than their normal walking speed. At that point, we'll see dots occur 
in the upper right hand corner of the graph to represent the faster walking speeds. And then you do also want to confirm a pace that's at their normal walking speed as well. So ultimately we'll have a plot of three different walking speeds. If the patient is walking consistent, we should see these nice clusters between each one of those speeds. And at that point, what we'll want to do is verify that the patient feels that like the power is natural and normal as compared to their sound side. And then once we confirm that, then we can move to having the patient walk on different types of terrain. So if you ever get to a point where you need to start over with the tuning, or if you're testing a particular speed and you only want to focus on that speed, again, we can bring out this hidden menu, slide to the left, choose the X button, it asks you if you want to clear the data, we say yes, and we can see now that all the steps disappear. And step three is simply setting the low battery alert for the patient. They will get a warning, which will be represented by the ankle vibrating. So they get one warning at 20% and another around 10%. And step three is just giving you the option of what type of vibration they get. So you can see here you have alert type A, alert type B, and then low, medium, and high strength. Type A and type B is the type of frequency, whether it's a fast or slow frequency. And then the strength is literally just how aggressively the ankle vibrates. You do have the capability to test the low battery alert. So you can choose, for example, type A, high strength, hit preview low battery, and this will cause the patient's ankle to vibrate. And you can get feedback from the patient at this point if they can feel the vibration to confirm that they'll know when the battery is low. Step four, you will save the settings to the tablet. We we'll choose the button that says Save Biome Settings to Tablet. And then this is going to ask us to create a file name. There is a timestamp automatically applied to this name, so you don't need to put a date in. So you'll assign a name to it. For example, we'll say Test. And then you would simply choose Remember Profile and that would save those particular settings for that patient to the tablet. So once you verify the parameters by having the patient walk at various speeds on different types of terrain, such as the ramps and stairs, the final step is to record a tuning record. So in order to do that, we need the patient to walk at three distinct speeds, which would be slow, medium, and fast. And we also want to record those steps. So we'll go back to this hidden menu on the right, swipe the menu out, and we'll go back to the record button, which I referenced before. So by touching the record button, that allows us to capture any steps that the patient takes after that, and it will eventually convert them into a PDF file, uh, which is the tuning record. So at this point, I'm going to choose record. We can see that that button turns into a stop button, which you will press once you're done recording. So the more steps we get, the better, just because we get more of a pattern for that walking speed. So we can see the steps clustering there at the slower speed. And one thing to note as well are these one-offs. So this step, for example, represents when he turns. So I'm just going to ignore that one and focus more on the, the cluster. So the next speed will be his self-selected speed or his normal speed. And then finally, we'll have him walk at the fastest speed that he can safely walk at. So at this point, I'm going to ask the patient to stop walking. I'll bring the menu back out. I'll stop the recording. Once you stop the recording, it'll ask you a series of questions to complete the tuning record. So we start with the attending prosthetist name, the facility that the patient is being fit at, and then a, a series of questions that will help us establish the tuning record, such as the type of fitting it it is, this will give you actually options. So in this case, we could call this a demonstration. The amputation level, in Ryan's case, he's a unilateral transtibial. He is a right amputee. And once we filled in all of these fields, we simply hit export. And it will take about 30 seconds to a minute to upload that data to the tablet and convert it into a PDF file. OK, 
Okay. Excellent.